Hey, how's it going? So just to follow up on that last video, uh, what was that? A week ago, a little under two weeks ago, the car died. Wife was driving it on the freeway and some warning lights came on. Hey, the AC is going to shut down. Stuff is hot in here is what it was saying. So she pulls over into a Starbucks parking lot and everything just seems to have died on her. It, it didn't just get hot. It got hot and exploded. Uh, there was no explosion. No one was hurt. But uh, we, we had it towed to our local uh, car repair place, right? And they quote us with, oh, this is a melted engine block. Engine block is shot. Uh, it's going to cost over $10,000 to replace the engine with labor. Now, a quick Google search of this make and model. It is not a $10,000 engine to replace. Uh, labor shouldn't be that high. That's a little weird. So we get a second opinion on this. Um, the coolant and the oil is mixing. Hint, hint. Anyone who knows anything about cars, I know two out of 10 with cars. I know enough to get around. I know there's not a flux capacitor in an engine. Uh, I can change my own oil, but I don't because frankly, I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> so the second opinion is saying it's just a blown head gasket. That makes a lot more sense. Engine starts, it doesn't make noises as if it's a melted engine block. It's probably a blown head gasket. Um, when the engine starts, it doesn't sound weird. Uh, we don't run it very long. We did it for a few tests to roll the window up and such. Um, but essentially, that first car place seems to be a little suspect. All right? Did they cause the problem? Maybe. I mean, a month ago, they did the oil change. Did they make some kind of mistake? Uh, possibly, but there's no evidence of that. I have no reason to believe that. They've been good to us for the three, four years we've lived here. No reason to believe that. You know, I, I end up doing some more Google searches. That make and model had a recall for that year of the car because of faulty head gaskets. So what do I do? I call the dealership. I say, hey, head gasket blew. What can we do? Is there any kind of coverage for repairs? Does this car qualify for a recall? They don't give me a call back. Service lady says, hey, we'll have a rep give you a call back to uh, see what you qualify for. I don't get that call back. When I call, I get thrown around on hold waiting for any kind of response. No one wants to pay for repairs. Okay, okay, I understand. Hey, it's my car. I should pay for repairs. I get it, take responsibility. I'm I'm with you. I'm a little frustrated with first the car repair service that may or may not be swindling me, uh, then with the dealership that may or may not just be avoiding me because they don't want to pay for a repair. <sighs> okay, take a deep breath. What can we do? Well, there are plenty of cheap, reliable junkers for sale across the nation. That's a great date idea. <laughs> Fly with your wife to pick up a car for $2,000 or less. Preferably less. Man, I got kids. Uh, <laughs> drive it back home. Replace the car. Now, what do we do with the broken car? There's a really cool service where you can donate the car. They auction it off. And the proceeds of that go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Well, that is really appealing because A, I don't want to pay for the repairs. It's about the same cost as a new car. And this car, it's been somewhat of a lemon. It's, it's required repairs here and there, and now this is shot and got to replace the, just, just get rid of it. Get rid of the headache. Find a junker eventually. Right now we're sustaining with one car. Okay. We're okay. The... Registration's coming up in about two weeks, so we got to figure out what to do. I'm leaning towards the donation thing. It lowers our insurance costs. It lowers gas costs. Every now and then, I'm going to have a work thing that happens on a day that I'm working from home. I'll have to go in on like a mandatory office day. Okay, so that's an Uber cost. Maybe rent a car. But that's still less than insurance and gas. So if we could figure out how to do this with one car we cut our costs by quite a bit. 
And then the car breaking down is just water under the bridge. And hey, maybe we get a cool flight. Go drive a car back. That brings its own headaches. You know, who's going to watch the kids? Do we fly with the kids? Do we... All kinds of fun. But there's a lot of blessings in this negative occurrence. In this thing happening, man, there's so much that just brings us down, brings us stress. <sighs> Ultimately, it just feels so... I got a phone call, and it cut that last video off. So... I'm not really sure where that ended up. Post-production Luke will try to edit this together. Basically what I'm saying is when something negative happens, there tends to be some kind of silver lining, some kind of positive you can get out of it. And that's what I'm trying to focus on. Focus on the, on the good things in life, the, the opportunities that this very frustrating occurrence presents. And frankly, I, I, I think that's the only way forward because... That last video I did, I felt really defeated, but now I just feel like it's going to be okay, and we're going to grow through this, and you know what? At the end of the day, it's just a small problem. We got this. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.